hello and welcome to replay value. I don't really get why there's a sudden rush to make defenses of Violet Evergarden when it's plainfully obvious that the show has some real substance behind it, and conveys a lot more in ways that aren't as obvious. See my analysis of episode 5 for something more along those lines. Yes, it was overhyped, but that doesn't suddenly make this a show any less worthy of your attention. And episode 9 is definitely the emotional payoff for the previous 8 episodes, and honestly felt more like a penultimate episode or finale than just another one for the books. And while originally I was planning on releasing something else entirely for today, I've wanted to touch on the topic of hands in Violet for a while now, and I honestly cannot see it getting any more thematically or symbolically relevant than this episode. I've danced around the subject of hands for a while, like in my episode 3 analysis with the reaching out to Lakulia and her hat, but episode 9 primes you to consider the subject right off the bat with Violet losing her arms. The ease by which she powers through almost underplays the severity of the injury. But the way the arm detaches after the explosion and falls to the ground is almost beautiful and haunting at the same time. And the subsequent discussion between the Major and Violet, with Violet attempting to save him with just her mouth, and the blood dripping from her now empty sleeve is just stunning. As the final explosions go off, the war ends. But both literally and emotionally, the war has caused Violet to lose important things. Her arms and the Major. And while her arms have been replaced with metal ones, the Major has not been replaced. And so the shots of Violet picking through the rubble create an almost eerie disconnect that make you realize that this girl is far from being whole, because she's lost the Major, and because of the things that she did as a soldier. And that comes to a boil when Violet dreams about the Major repeating the words of his brother. With your bloodstained hands that have taken countless lives, you write letters that bring people together, and when she awakens, she immediately focuses on the stuffed dog she received from Hodgins in the first episode. She chose that dog because she was considered to be the Major's dog, and it represents the old her, the one who fought in the war and did all of those horrible things that she's been regretting since episode 7. As she knocks aside the books and the lantern, she lifts the dog into the air but is unable to toss it aside. As Hodgins said earlier, she won't be able to forget the things she's done. The dog's unmoving, uncaring eyes mimic her origin, as an unfeeling weapon of war. And seemingly unable to forgive herself, she begins to strangle herself with her metal hands. But she stops. Had this been the old Violet, the one with the Major and her hands made of flesh, she would have been able to do it no problem. But this Violet, though despairing for her actions that she cannot take back and having lost her seemingly only reason to live, can't do it. As she begs for orders, we cut to this shot of the stars which matches the shot after the final orders the Major gave her, for her to live and to be free. And this is the thematic crux of the episode. The old Violet died in that fortress when she lost her arms and the Major. So it's fitting that this story where she discovers her new self and her life without him starts in the ruins of that fortress as well. We see this flower attempting to bloom through the rubble, her old army self saluting the car as it departs from the blockade, and of course the clearest differential is the metal arms she now has. But over the course of the episode, Violet is forced to come to terms with the fact that her past is forever a part of her, despair as she might, and that the Major is gone. And while Catalia cries that Violet has lost everything, Hodgins knowingly states that she hasn't lost anything. Because the thing that's replacing the Major is the new people that care about her. The letter from Erica and Iris, Catalia stopping by with a snack, and Hodgins waiting out in the rain with her. There are other people who see her as a person, not as a weapon or a tool. And so when a friendly hand knocks on the door to deliver a letter that reinforces that very thing, Violet is able to see why what she does is so important. As she helps deliver these letters, she sees how important letters are to people, and she's able to see how she's helped people in the world since she's left the army. She reunited a brother and sister, helped a young couple ensure that their marriage was for real, comforted an old father who lost his reason to live, and just by being herself, she's made connections with people who care about her and contributed to their major life decisions. Letters, we're told, contain a person's heart and soul. And the hands that type those letters and deliver those letters are critical to conveying that meaning. Violet responds to this outpouring by writing a letter to Lucullia for Spencer, a thematic circle to the first letter she wrote that conveyed the emotions necessary to reach the recipient. After writing that letter, she walks through town and sees the way that she's affected people positively like Princess Charlotte and Prince Damien, and also the playwright. And these two help to position this idea properly as she walks forward to see these blooming violets, a callback to the sprout trying to bloom from the ruins of the fortress. And in this beautiful dissolve, we see that Violet is now in the position of the Major, who reached out a hand to a young girl afraid of everything, 
And now Violet is in the same position, able to reach out a helping hand to those who need to convey their innermost thoughts to another. And the Major has never left her, as another dissolve from his eye to her brooch tells us that everything he's done for her will never, ever leave her. As she takes off running to her new home, we see a group of white birds take off to the sky, metaphorically fulfilling the Major's final command to Violet, to live and to be free. In the final moment of the episode, Violet asks Hodgins if it's okay for her to live on, and he can only respond by saying that she can't undo what she's done. So that means that her actions during the war with her hands, even if they've changed, do not suddenly become clean. But it also means that her actions since becoming a doll, since getting her new arm, since striving to become a person, and to be free and to understand the words of the Major, all cannot be undone either. And that as the Major desired her to be a person worthy of the name she was bestowed, she has done that and will continue to do that as Violet Evergarden, auto memory doll for the CH Postal Service, whose logo is, of course, two helping hands. Thanks for watching. I tried something a little bit different to try and be a bit more narratively flowery, so let me know what you thought with a comment down below. Subscribe for more if this kind of thing is interesting, follow us on Twitter for my thoughts as they happen, and of course, we'll be back soon with a Hyoka analysis and some other new material.